Food prices, transport fares rise in November, says the National Bureau of Statistics. Federal government orders CBN to provide forex for ship owners at official rate. Afrix and Bank's board approves $1.5 billion funding for participating states in the Caribbean. Plus oil prices climb on easing China COVID-19 curbs and concerns over U.S. term impact. This is Business Express on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And we're reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Katumba Batunde. You're welcome. It's still the holiday season and of course it ends today. But we start by informing you that the National Bureau of Statistics NBSS prices of selected food items and transport fares increased in the month of November. The highest increase was recorded by animal and vegetable fats and oils and other cleavage production followed by mineral products and footwear, headgear, umbrellas, sunshades, whips amongst other products. The National Bureau of Statistics latest report on commodity price indices and terms of trade indicates that the all commodity group export price index averaged increased by 0.26 percentage points in the third quarter of 2022. The increase was majorly attributed to an increase in the prices of wood and articles of wood, the oil products terms of trade index on average decreased by 0.5 percent points because of increases in the prices of paper making materials. The oil region group export index also increased by 0.26 percent points, mainly due to rise in prices of exports to all regions except America and Oceania. Meanwhile, in its transport fare watch, the Bureau said that the average fare paid by commuters for bus journeys within the CTP drop increased by 0.12% in November 2022 on a month-on-month -month basis from 636 Naira 30 Kaba in October 2022 to 637 Naira 10 Kaba. In air travels fare, the average fare paid by air passengers for specified routes single journey increased by 0.09% on a month-on-month -month basis from 73,198 Naira 65 Kaba in October 2022 to 73,267 Naira 57 Kaba in November 2022. On the year on year, the fare rose by 97.9% from 37,022 Naira 97 Kaba in November 2021. Now, Nigeria's budgetary processes are much more transparent and participatory. All stakeholders, especially the citizens, are carried along and enabled to make inputs into the process. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, who has been reeling out information about the federal government's developmental efforts, says Nigeria recorded its best performance on the Open Budget Survey, OBS, scoring 45% in the latest 2021 survey for transparency, indicating an improvement by 24 points, a significant leap from the 21% achieved in the 2019 exercise. We also assisted the private sector and state governments to plan their budgets to align with the federal government budget. It has also led to full implementation of budgets, especially the capital component, because since uh, the 2020 budget, we have always funded our capital component 100%. Uh, there's no year that we, we haven't uh, uh, 
uh, done that. Significantly, it has also removed uncertainties associated with delayed budgets, which include delayed investment, thus making the implementation of government programs and projects predictable. In fact, the early submission of the federal government's annual budget enables the states to use the budget assumptions to prepare the annual budgets. Efforts are made to ensure prompt distribution of the federally collected revenues to the federating units to enable them to implement their budgets. Reactions are trailing the revised cash withdrawal limits by the Central Bank of Nigeria, which now pegs maximum weekly limit across all channels by individuals at 5,000 Naira and corporate organizations at 5 million Naira. Boste Eva reports that though this is an upward review of the previous limit set in a December 6, 2022 circular by the Apex Bank, some Nigerians still look unfavorably at the policy. Development is coming two weeks after the Apex Bank reduced the weekly over-the-counter cash withdrawal limits for individuals to 100,000 Naira and that of corporate organizations to 500,000 Naira. The Apex Bank noted that it recognizes the vital role that cash transactions play in supporting underserved and rural communities and would ensure an inclusive approach as it implements the transaction to a more cashless society. I think it's welcome. Um, as I said, it's evidence-based, and um, uh, with what they have done, it, you know, uh, central bank, um, you know, has not accommodated a lot of um, opinions, um, you know, it, uh, by revising the cash limit. Everybody now will partake in the uh, financial in the banking system, uh, and uh, if you're compelled to partake in it. You will have access to other banking services that you would have hit or to not have gotten access to. Despite the assurance from the CBN, some Nigerians have been critical of the policy. It's better than what it was. Since there's an increment from the 20,000 to 100, then from the 100 to 500. But I still feel the CBN government should still do more. If this actually would work, I want to expect the CBN to, if they, if maybe a synergy with the network, the service providers, um, to strengthen networks in all those local areas, and there should be sensitization. The CBN says this directive, which supersedes that of December 6, 2022, will take effect nationwide from January 9, 2023. So... Earlier this month, of course, as we heard in that report, the central bank issued a circular introducing a weekly OTC cash withdrawal limit, 100,000 naira for individuals and 500,000 naira for corporates. Well, this policy was greeted with an outcry by the public and days to Christmas, a revised notice was put out. Now, let's get some understanding of the policy and I'll be quoting exactly what my bank mailed me just yesterday. What does this mean for you? And these were the answers they provided. One, over-the-counter transactions, your maximum weekly cash withdrawal limit over-the-counter at our branches is now 500,000 Naira. If you need to withdraw more, you will be charged a 3% processing fee. Two, checks, a third-party checks above 100,000 Naira must be paid into an account. Three, ATM. Your maximum cash withdrawal limit per week via the ATM is 100,000 Naira, subject to a maximum daily cash withdrawal of 20,000 Naira. Only 200 Naira and lower denominations will be loaded in our ATMs in line with the new regulations. Four, POS. Your maximum daily cash withdrawal on a POS is 20,000 Naira. If you must withdraw above 500,000 Naira weekly, you will be required to provide a valid ID, that is driver's license, voter's card, or international passport. The cash withdrawal will be subject to a 3% processing fee and other information requirements. Yes. But then, are we ready? How are we ready for a cashless society? I have with me Isa Liushata, Vice President at Conga Pay. He's also the current President of Digital Finance Practitioners Association of Nigeria and Vice Chairman of Association of Licensed Mobile Payment Operators, ALMO. 
multiple caps, I must say. Yeah, and uh, ample, actually. Ample, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. right. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. Thanks for always having me. Yeah. January 9 is just 13 days away. Yeah. And of course, this is holiday season. Firstly, we actually saw outcry over poor banking services during the holiday period. One would assume that by now we have outgrown that, but we still have them with us. Is the CBN biting more than it can chew? Uh, not really. I think it's long overdue, you know, um, if I want to go back to when the CBN came up with the national, you know, financial inclusion strategy in 2012, mm -hmm. you know, it was to prepare us, you know, ahead for today. And if you look at it, this is over a decade now mm -hmm. when they, come, they came up with that policy. And the first license they issued at that time was the mobile money license. And what was the reason? They looked at the active bank accounts that we have in the country versus the active phone numbers that we have in Nigeria. So they look at it that, look, to encourage financial inclusion, right, to bring people from the underbanked or underserved community into the financial ecosystem, they needed to change the entire environment for us to at least be prepared ahead. So they looked at it. Then we have close to about 120 million active lines. And they said if we can integrate all of these people into the you know, ecosystem, we would have expanded that you know, financial inclusion um, bucket. But how have we fared from then? There are a lot of you know, um, license, regulatory license uh, categories that have actually come out from there. You have the PSSP license, the PTSP license, the IMTO license for international remittance and all that. The super agent license. You know, I can go on, the PSB license that they just also started issuing. All of this is in a bid to encourage, you know, and deepen the financial inclusion, you know, processes. And the, you can see that we have done significantly well. I can tell you from experience, you know, people will say, if you look at statistics, the region that is, you know, financially excluded more in Nigeria is actually the north. You know, you can drill it down to the northeast, the north central and northwest, you know, in that category. But over time, there's been a, some experimental pilot schemes that have taken place in this region that have actually created awareness drive. CBN has done so much to create awareness drive where we do community storm, you know, to encourage people to embrace, you know, financial inclusion um, approach, you know, to doing business. And I can guarantee you that from statistics, if we want to drill down to statistics, you see that it is actually what it is. When they talked about the um, tier level, tier one, the tier two, and the tier three, all of these are to accommodate the different buckets of different customers that are doing certain transactions with certain limits. For tier one, of course, you know you can't do more than hundred thousand. Initially, you don't have you, you don't need to have your BVN before you come on board as tier one. But now we needed to they needed to uh, you know co come up with their BVN as well because. There are a lot of fraudulent activities that take place within that, you know, um, tier level. And BVN has been made mandatory by the CBN, you know, for anybody coming into the ecosystem from tier one to have BVN, tier two and tier three, as the case may be. Uh, the truth is, I will tell you that when you talk about um, fintech, financial technology in Africa, in fact, in the world, Nigeria has actually moved above almost every nation. I think the... Few, fewer nations in Africa, East Africa specifically, are those who have actually got it right. And it's, it was because of certain policies that their own central bank also have passed that has galvanized that you know, space mm -hmm. to move over time. Okay, so yeah. let's just address some of those concerns. I'm glad you, you're mentioning East Africa. Yeah. And um, I, I know for certain that as far back as 2016, I saw a lot of activities via the Mpesa uh, system there and worked and was working uh, very, very smoothly and yeah. effectively. And it was awesome back then. Yeah. And um, I'm certain they have grown over time beyond what I saw at that time. Uh, so uh, the CBN has come up with so much list on how to address disputes because these are some of the concerns uh, the public is raising. And when we have large volumes of transactions, they're of course going to be 
uh, those concerns of fields, payments of fields, these and whatever. So how expedient is it for us to have a system that resolves uh, these disputes Issue quickly? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so one of the things that Central Bank has drawn into our ears, when I say us, I'm talking about the practitioners, the, fintechs, yeah. the bank, other financial institutions mm -hmm. and all that, is that you must take customers seriously. In fact, if a customer escalates you to CBN, you risk certain sessions and your license might also be withdrawn. So it's good that, you know, customers out there know that CBN is doing everything possible to ensure that they are protected when it comes to them, you know, having dispute resolution uh, around their transactions and all that. So the truth is, um, just like every system, there will definitely be challenges. And I can guarantee you that the kind of investment that has gone in place for the financial infrastructure that we have today, when you know the financial inclusion strategy started in 2012, right? You will discover that there is a lot of things that has been put in place in terms of checking fraudulent activities and in terms of um, the compliance rate. Because one thing I can tell you is recently CBN and NDIC and every other regulation are actually coming strongly at practitioners, at all practitioners in the ecosystem to ensure that you comply effectively to all of these rules of engagement. So talking about um, issue resolution, customer, it also depends on the individual or the primary institutions that you are doing business with. One of the things I know we do at Conga Pay is that we are invest heavily you know, in customer resolution, customer service, to ensure that there are that we have that platform because beyond customers we also service agent network and you know you have people just like you read out over the counter transaction they go to these um, agents to carry out transaction and these guys are largely impatient the agents you need to be able to also feed them back with you know information with actionable you know data that they can use to service their customers right mm -hmm. so we have put all of this mechanism in place in terms of operation even on at the association level ample we have also ensured that all our members, you know, conform to this basic set of, you know, um, ensuring that no customer complains, even while customer complains of fraudulent activities, the response rate of every individual institution is very key. And that is exactly one of the things that we have tried, you know, to encourage. And the system is improving. And also, it also depends on the risk appetite of every financial institution that is involved in this um, space. Because the truth is, when customers begin to lose trust in your brand, you're going to suffer. So you don't, nobody really needs to tell you to put all of those you know, mechanisms in place to ensure that you service your customers effectively. OK, I want to come in here before, before you leave that line of thought, when we talk about the risk and, uh, and trust. How do people, most of these rural dwellers now, who don't really know um, how these systems work, let me, uh, pardon me to put it that way, how do they know a service provider who is licensed and who is not? How do they identify the genuine people to deal with? Thank you very much. So, like I said in my opening league, CBN had engaged in a lot of community engagement, awareness drive and all the stakeholders within the ecosystem were brought on board to go on this activity. So there are things that, by default, every financial institution is, um, needs to have. When you have agents spread out there, you are supposed to have it with the service provider that is providing you whatever services that you are getting, most especially the fintech space. Licensed by CBA, insured by NDIC. This is compulsory. And once anybody sees all of these signs, they already know that this, uh, this particular operator is licensed by CBN and, and is insured by, by NDIC. NDIC. So you know that this person is fully regulated. Even us at the association level, we are strongly going after the people we call the umbrella POS providers or operators. Because these are people whom you don't know the operators that they are identified with. Mm -hmm. And these are the people who are largely spread in the, some of the rural areas and the peri-urban centers. But like I said, with a lot of community engagement, stakeholders engagement, community storm, you know, awareness drive, people will begin to know. And what we have um, ensured that we want to do 
differently. So even in my primary uh, institution, is to ensure that we customize all of our languages to suit the language of the community so that they can understand. Not all of them you know, can actually relate to English. Not, mm -hmm. of, not all of them are actually literate or mm -hmm. semi-literate. Mm -hmm. But we it's want to localize you know, the content yeah. Yeah. to fit in into the community's language so that they are aware. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are also doing is to have the people who call the invisible gatekeepers, mm -hmm. the traditional ruler, the district mm -hmm. heads, religious bodies, you know, have an interaction with them so that we can also channel the communication, you know, network through that platform to ensure that people are constantly being informed on what they need to look out for and how they need to also protect, you know, their cards, if they mm -hmm. must use their card as well at yes. uh, the POS point. If from statistics today, it is, yes, we know that cash is still the king, but mm -hmm. one of the things that has actually you know, grown tremendously for us is the transfer services. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are, are now more, you know, um, entrusted to do, to carry out, uh, you know, transfers, you know, as to even using their card, because they feel that there is that instant settlement, mm -hmm. which is what NIPS has done differently, yeah. you know, for us as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. You know, the instant set and if you look at it till date, from month to date for this year, we have done close to about 345 trillion Naira in volume of transaction. Wow. This uh, last month, November, mm -hmm. we have done close to about 38.9 trillion. Oh, wow. You know, if you look at it um, year on year and month on month, mm -hmm. compared to last year, mm -hmm. we are doing 50% average increase Already, from what yeah. we are doing before. Mm -hmm. So it means a lot of people are accepting, yeah. you know, the platform. A lot of people are beginning to trust the system. Mm -hmm. And why? Because of the technology that we have put in place, because of the regulatory guidelines, the regulatory whips that are also coming. So everybody is on their toes. Nobody wants their license to be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, CBN has been doing a lot of engagement, you know, with us at the association level, at uh, the organization level. I can count how many times CBN had come this year to audit us. We send monthly reports on transactions. Oh, that's fantastic. So when mm -hmm. CBN tells you that, um, nobody does above 500,000, you know, in terms of even 100,000 in terms of withdrawal on a, we, on a weekly, on a monthly basis. That statistic to. is correct okay. because they've gotten those statistics from all the players mm. within the industry. Mm. So I can guarantee you that even us, from our own statistic internally, mm -hmm. the transactions are highest at our agency point are between 1,000 to 10,000 error. Okay, I want to ask you one question uh, quickly. I'm told I don't have any more time, but I would need you, for the sake of our viewers, yeah. to just answer this. Is it appropriate to say that every transaction you are in doubt with, as long as you receive alerts, can be traced? Of course, it can be traced. Mm -hmm. I can give you a scenario that I'll call. We, we pay an organization salary, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the staff triggered an alarm to say that we have stolen his salary. Immediately he was paid. Well, guess what? After we carried out investigation, we discovered that that individual had compromised his data in four different devices. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, dear. And because there are um, levels of authentication where you are carrying out transactions, it's either you are using the OTP, one-time password, or you are using your personalized PIN. It's like giving your house key to somebody and the person duplicates the key. Mm -hmm. You cannot guarantee the safety of your house. Okay. So, but the, the PIN is a safety to your money. Okay. So I can guarantee you that as long as you don't compromise your data, it can be traceable. We trace it to the point to where the money was paid to and the purpose for which the money was paid. The money was actually taken from his account to pay for a loan payment. Oh dear. Yes. So there are so traces. So we're going to come to these issues uh, some other time because we've had a lot of people come up with with with, with stories about their monies being ripped no, off. No, if, if you drill deep, some deep, some if you drill deep, you are yes. definitely going to see that all of this ecosystem is, is secured. And oh, we are okay. doing more to even secure the ecosystem, oh, okay. you know, okay. for, yes. for people. It's like you keeping money at home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not safe. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Sally, thank you, Ali. Yeah. Isa, Isa Ali Shata, for coming on the program. Thank and uh, we hope to keep the conversations going until every Nigerian comes on board. Thank you very much. I thank I, you and enjoy the rest of the holidays. Yeah, I can guarantee everyone that um, the space is safe. And it can only get better okay. from next year. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. And we move straight to the commodities market.
And it is on that note that we wrap this episode of Business Express. Remember to send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us via our various social media platforms. The program returns Wednesday at 3 p.m. But don't forget holidays end today. And... Uh, work resumes and all uh, official markets also will resume by Wednesday. My name is Leah Katun Babat and they say compliments of the season and God bless Nigeria. <music>